nine day cruise out of New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, it was good. We had a refreshing and relaxing time. But when we returned back home, we discovered that the refrigerator was out. Oh. Oh. I called my brother Terry, told him about the problem. He said, brother, you know you've been having that refrigerator a long time. <laughs> It's time for another one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Matt and I went shopping for another refrigerator. Mm -hmm. However, the price exceeded my current budget. <laughs> so I asked the salesman, uh, do you know anyone who can repair refrigerators? <laughs> he asked for the brand. I said, it's GE. So he told me the name and gave me the name and number of Tom. Tom graciously came over mm -hmm. and did a diagnostic test. Mm -hmm. He said, Micah J., mm -hmm. you don't need another refrigerator. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you need a, an, another electrical board. Mm -hmm. The board was ordered, but it would not arrive until Friday after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Tom said, Micah J., I'll show you how to install the board. You don't have to worry about that. And if I show you how to install it, then I don't have to come back. That'll save you some money. Oh. The queen looked at Tom <laughs> and then looked at me. I said, Tom, man, that's not my gifted area. Are you sure you can do it? He said, I will empower you to do it by right giving now. you step-by-step -step instructions. Right. 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 Tom showed me what to do when the board arrived and gave us a bonus, y'all. He fixed the dryer, too, while he was there. <laughs> that thing had been out for six months, y'all. So he left the house. Later that evening, the Holy Spirit said, put the old board back in. Y'all, I put the old board back in because of the empowerment and instructions of Tom. To my surprise, the refrigerator started working again. Thank you, Jesus. It worked for another week, then it went out again. But have no fear, Micah J is here. <laughs> I put the new board in, right. reprogrammed the refrigerator, and it started working again. I was able to install and repair the refrigerator because I had been empowered, y'all, <laughs> by Tom. Well, a few weeks later, we started our small group, and our toddler continued to run in the guest room. Well, since I fixed the refrigerator, <laughs> surely I can fix a running toilet. Should the skills be transferable? The queen said in a nice way, mm, that's not your gifted area. Let's call Terry. But y'all, my pride started relishing up. And I started feeling like Lil Nas X. In the song Old Town Road. Here's what I'm feeling now. Somebody tell me now. I was feeling this way, man. All right, I, I'm saying you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> I wanted to demonstrate to my abilities uh, and prove the queen wrong. Okay. Now, the queen didn't mean any harm. Okay. She was just trying to help me, saying, yeah, Michael yeah, J, yeah. Michael, Michael J, Michael J, that's not your function. Just because you can do one thing well does not mean you can do everything well. Y'all, yeah, yeah. I forgot I was empowered and given instruction ah. by Tom yeah. to replace the refrigerator and the electrical board. He gave me the knowledge to fix the refrigerator, but not the toilet. <laughs> I was acting like I fixed the refrigerator through my own ingenuity. 
my own yeah. skills and abilities. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? Come on. You make people crazy when you think you know it all. Yeah. When you don't listen to another voice, yeah. you think you are the come most on, gifted yeah. and you are the only knowledgeable person in the room. Yeah. In essence, oh. you think you are flawless, yeah. better than and more important than anybody else. Yeah. Well, in this crazy series, we discovered how Satan and others are the crazy makers in our lives. Uh -huh. But what happens when you are the crazy maker in the relationship? Because you think you are better than your mate. You are more significant than them. You make more money than them. What happens when it is you that can't nobody tell you nothing? What is the cause? the consequences and the cure of this type of craziness. Well, turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. And let us unpack this verse with the help of the Holy Spirit. Close ourselves with this truth and roll up out of here. Here's what it says. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober, judge, sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Mm -hmm. The contemporary English version says it this way. I realize God has treated me with undeserved grace. All right. All right. Mm, 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 mm. And so I tell each of you not to think that you are better than you really are. Yeah. Use good sense. Did I say good sense? And measure yourself by the amount of faith that God has given you. Amen. 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 Want to put a tag on this text? Let's call it crazy thinking. <laughs> Remember last year we commenced the Transform campaign? We did all in the message. <laughs> Progressive transformation was to take place in the areas of the spirit, the physical, the mental, emotional, relational, financial, and vocation. The thematic thrust was Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because everything, did I say everything? Everything starts in the mind. Jesus said it this way, we are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's Matthew 22 and 37. The cause of craziness lies in the way we think. Yeah. Proverbs 23, 7 says it this way, as a man thinketh in his heart, yeah. Yeah. so is he. Yeah. God wants us to be transformed people. But transformation takes place only when we allow the Holy Spirit to renew, yes. Right. re-educate and redirect our minds. Yeah. Paul in verse 2 tells us this, that the results of a transformed mind, that we are able to be able to test and approve what is God's will. But at this point, he does not tell us what a transformed mind looks like right. until we get to verse 3, according to John Piper. In verse 3, Paul repeats this formula from verse 2. He starts off with a negative and then a positive. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, negative but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right. positive. Right. Verse three, he says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, right. negative, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned you, yes, positive. He says, Michael J., I know <laughs> you've been saved by grace, mm -hmm. sanctified, Feel with the Holy Spirit. I know you got a trophy and a hot wife. 
I know you got wonderful children, great. You got a great and supportive family. You've obtained your MBA. You got a good job. And you're a member of an awesome church. Did I say an awesome church? But don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Don't think you are better than or more important than somebody else. When you think this way, you complicate your relationships with God and with others. Y'all, that's my first point. Point one is the complication of pride. Remember, it starts with our thinking. Pride is in the word, will take you for a ride. <laughs> And in the word, uh, the I is right in the middle of pride. Right. Mm -hmm. What causes some of us to think more highly than we ought to think? Mm -hmm. Feeling that we're more important or better than somebody else. We call it pride. Uh, sometimes it comes from knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, knowledge is power. Yeah. However, you can be knowledgeable and immature at the same time. And some of us feel that because we have matriculated through college, got a better GPA than somebody else, we've acquired many degrees, that we are smarter and better than others. And according to Paul Tripp, he says it this way, when knowledgeable people look in the mirror, they are tempted to see someone with a powerful brain mm. and think they are self-sufficient. Mm. Success is another one. It's awesome to be successful. We all ought to strive for it. But it can be simultaneously a dangerous thing. Because sometimes successful people are rarely humble because they take credit for what only God can produce. They look in the mirror and are tempted to see someone who deserves all that they have. They feel that they've earned it and they work for it and they did it by themselves. Recognition is another area. All of us want to be recognized. We delight in hearing our name called because we are selfishly in love with ourselves and want to be praised and honored. We stay awake at night thinking about the negative comments somebody posts about us. But popular people look in the mirror hmm, and see someone who has arrived who has made it, and they feel that they should get special attention everywhere they go. They want to be treated like royalty. That's another one. Power and money. It's good to have, but it can translate to feeling like you are an exception to the rule. And other people are less than you are. Because they don't make as much money as yeah. you make. Yeah. They don't live in the type house that you live in. Yeah. Or they don't drive a luxury car like you. Mm -hmm. This can make relationships crazy. Yeah. Powerful people and people with money, they look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And they're tempted to think that because of their power, their prestige, their positions, that it came from their own hard work. And rules don't apply. And they can do nothing. Did I say nothing? They can do nothing wrong. Well, in Second Chronicles chapter 26, we see the cause and consequences of thinking too highly of yourself. Uzziah was an illustrious king. Uh, he became king uh, at the age of 16 and reigned for 52 years, y'all. In the early stages of his reign, uh, he sought God during the days of Zechariah, uh, who taught him how to fear God. And as long as he sought guidance from God, the book said that God gave him success. Check out his resume. 
with God's help, he was very successful in his military exploits, mm -hmm. defeating the Philistines, Arabs, the Ammonites, everybody in his track, just to name a few. His fame and recognition spread throughout the land, including Egypt. Uh, he was a master-minded person, uh, so much so that uh, he constructed fortress towers in Jerusalem at various points to protect the walls. Uh, he took on massive agricultural projects in the desert as well as the foothills. And he loved the soil and was a farmer at heart. Y'all, this man was a visionary. Here he reorganized an army of 307,000 men, well trained them and equipped them with the latest technology, put them under the leadership of 26 other leaders, and he pioneered the use of certain advanced weapons, such as the catapult, to throw arrows and large stones at a great distance. All of this enhanced his relation and uh, his recognition and it increased his power. <sighs> but in verse 16, okay. as my mama said, he got too big for his britches. Okay. <laughs> All right. yeah. He obviously stopped seeking the Lord. Mm -hmm. The text said that Uzziah got great power that led to pride, thinking more highly than the other thing, which proved to be his downfall. Yeah. Apparently, he began to depend on men and weapons rather than the Lord. And he thought he was the exception to the rule. Here's what he did. He sinned against God by entering the sanctuary of the Lord's temple and personally burning incense on the altar. Y'all, only the descendants of Aaron were set apart for this work, but Uzziah thought he was the exception to the rule. Y'all, he was the multi-gifted, he was a visionary, a soldier, innovative, builder, a monarch, but he wasn't a priest. This led to the consultation and confrontation of Isaiah, who was the high priest, and 80 other priests that came along who were not just priests, but also men of valor, mm -hmm. which means y'all, they were fighting preachers. <laughs> y'all would catch them on the way home. <laughs> they said to him, in essence, you are doing something you are not designed to do. Let me throw in parenthetically Romans 12, 6. He says, through grace, God has given us different gifts oh, to do certain things well. Oh, yeah. But he did not give one person all the gifts and abilities. Yeah. Right. Some have a gift of technology, uh -huh. strategic planning, serving, coaching, teaching, hosting, uh, fixing things, repairing, singing, showing kindness. These gifts are to be used in the body of Christ yeah and in your relationships. Oh, yeah, right. It was Pastor Pavlin who said it this way, that God has given all of us at least one thing to win with. Oh, Each of us brings something great to our relationships and the church that is much needed for success. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we sin against God when we function outside of our gifted areas. Yeah, yeah not allowing others to function in their gifted area, thinking too high of ourselves, and one of the consequences is ruptured relationships with God and with others. It's enough to make you crazy. But surely the king would appreciate someone correcting him. He probably said, I'm sorry. I stepped out of line, my bad. Forgive me for doing your job, doing what God empowered and designed you to do. But y'all, that didn't happen. And sometimes it doesn't happen in our relationship. Apology is not in the vocabulary. Hmm. When you think you're too high of your, um, yourself and someone corrects you for your benefit. Mm -hmm. Check out what could happen. Uzziah was holding the incense mm -hmm. and burning mm -hmm. 
And then he became furious. Wait a minute. Consultation and confrontation led to infuriation. As I became recalcitrant, that is, he was stubbornly refusing to change his course of action, despite attempts to persuade him to do so. Uh, Y'all, that was a feeling of intense anger and enragement by Uzzah, who was clearly in the wrong. Yeah, yeah. That makes for crazy relationships. Yeah. Yeah. When you think that the rules don't apply to you yeah. because of your position, yeah. your yeah. prominence, yeah. or your prestige, it makes people crazy when you are wrong. Mm -hmm. But you can't take the kind of people correcting you for your benefit. You get mad when people are looking out for your best good. Y'all ain't feeling me. People try to help you, but you go off on them. Give them the silent treatment. You stop talking to the person, unfriend them on Facebook, <laughs> and they're trying to help you, and they have your paramount interest at best. Ah, but you get mad at the very person who's trying to help you be successful. Infuriation leads to separation. If you look in that text, leprosy started on his forehead. The chief priest and the other priests rushed him out of the sanctuary because God got in the middle of it. And this rendered him unclean. And so when we get mad at the one that God is using to bless and to help us, it causes separation. Hmm. Nobody want to deal with you or say anything to you because you take things in the wrong way. You don't listen. You want to turn it into a, a debate or an argument. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> People avoid you and keep silence. How many relationships have you ruptured because you function out of your role? Thought you were better than somebody else, your significant other, and you refuse to be corrected, never admitting that you're wrong. You act like you're the fourth part of the Trinity. You know, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you. <sighs> I didn't think I'm going to get too many amens on this one. Another consequence, it moves from separation to isolation. Verse 21 said that Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in isolation in a separate house. He was quarantined and had to yield the reins of his position to his son, Jotham, to run the government. Here it is. If you don't change your thinking, you too will live in isolation from your family and your friends. And your significant others will replace you with another. Let that sink in. <laughs> but if you avoid this, you can avoid this if you think with sober judgment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. That's the second part of the verse. Because and the sober judgment has to be according to the measure of your faith. Uh -huh that God has given you. So you don't have to be jealous if somebody has one third teaspoon of faith, a tablespoon of faith, a cup of faith. It's because of what God has given you. Sober judgment means that it has to be a demonstration of humility. Watch this. It's a display. It's right thinking. It's the quality of thinking and understanding that my estimation is not in myself, but it's in God. Amen. And God is doing the working in me. Amen. Watch this. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who is at work in you, both to do and to will for his good pleasure. Yeah. How do we cure 
and avoid this type of craziness in relationship. I'm going to read it because y'all won't think I made it up. <laughs> so this is Philippians 2, <laughs> verses 3 through 5. He says, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. Mm -hmm. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, mm -hmm. but also for the interests of others. Good. Okay, y'all. So I, I'm not making this up. <laughs> Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Yeah. What if we sought to outdo each other in love? <laughs> I'm trying to move it. I need to let that one sit. What if we outdid each other in love. Yeah. Our relationship would be rich, real, and refreshing. Oh. Marriages would be marvelous and not miserable. Yeah. Friendship would be fabulous instead of frustrating. Church would be en encouraging and exhilarating yeah. instead of discouraging and agitating. Oh. Members would excel in their gifted areas for the body of Christ, and the body of Christ would grow and glow for the glory of God. Yes, yes. yes. amen. What if, what if we love and outdid each other in love? Mm -hmm. That's the demonstration of humility. But last, it's also, I got to understand the allocation of grace mm -hmm. and faith. Paul sandwiched this verse uh, with what God has done. Grace replaces pride. Mm -hmm. It was God who gave the grace, and God gives the faith. Mm -hmm. Each of us have a measure of faith that God has assigned to us. None of us can boast or think more highly since it is God who provides everything. James 1.17 says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above yes. and comes down from the Father light. Whatever gift you have is a grace gift from God. Yes. You didn't earn it and you don't deserve it. God in his sovereignty just gave it to you. Yes. And no one has anything to say when you have received it because God gave it to you. Yes. First Corinthians 4, 7 says, who regards you as superior? Mm -hmm. What do you have that you didn't receive? Mm -hmm. And if you didn't receive it, why do you boast? What we have, we receive from God, mm -hmm. including our faith. Amen. We use our faith to discover, develop, and put our gifts on display for the benefit of others mm -hmm. and the best good of the church and relationship with God. Because it is by grace we've been saved through Amen. faith. Amen. Amen. And we got to live the same way. Mm -hmm. What is faith? Glad you asked. Faith is looking away from me, yes. myself, and looking to another. Yes. It is total dependency upon somebody else. And that's God. So our faith should provide the basic uh, for the truth estimation of myself. Mm -hmm. Since it reveals that each believer is dependent on the mercy of God. Mm -hmm. So when faith looks in the mirror, All right. hmm, the mirror turns into a window. Mm -hmm. All right. Because they look at the glory of Christ on the other side. Oh. Let me close this with my opening dilemma. <laughs> Sorry I kept you too long. <laughs> Tom had empowered and given me instructions on how to replace the electrical board. Mm -hmm. The knowledge came from him, not from me. Mm -hmm. But he didn't give me the knowledge to fix the toilet. Oh. 
However, God had already given Terry, my brother, the knowledge mm -hmm. to fix the toilet. Mm -hmm. Whatever issues came up with fixing the toilet, Terry already had the answers for it. Mm -hmm. So there was no need of me getting in his way <laughs> and trying to say that I could do it. Now, y'all, I did try. I said I could do it, but then he started asking me a few questions about how to fix it. And uh, my answers got silent because <laughs> I didn't know. And so uh, for the one of the few times I let him fix the toilet, mm -hmm. I saved frustration mm -hmm. and it kept harmony in my house. Mm -hmm. Y'all, y'all ain't there yet. This ain't a shouting sermon yet. But here it is. I'm going to let you shout on this one. Remember. When our enemies were against us, mm -hmm. it was God who fought for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we were lost, <laughs> God sought us. Yeah. When we were on the slave, slave market of sin, God brought us. Yeah. Yeah. When we were fallen, God called us. Yeah. What we know, God taught us. Yeah. And where we are, God brought us. Yes. It is all because of the grace of God. Yes. And if we remember this, it will keep us from crazy thinking. Yes. You can't think above yourself because God has given you, then I say God has given you everything. Yes. Everything you have, God gave it to you. Yes. Your looks, he gave it to you. Your ability, he gave it to you. The way you think, he gave it to you. The knowledge you have, he gave it to you. Everything that you have, the car that you got, he did it. But the house that you have, he gave it to you. If you matriculated through education and school, God did it. It wasn't you. And so if I just remember, God did it. It alleviates <laughs> crazy thinking. Yeah. Let's pray. Gracious God, how we thank you for your word. Thank you. We pray that you will help us not to experience the complication of pride. Help us to actually experience the demonstration of humility. And then that we would always remember that no matter what we have and what we do, it is because of the allegation, allocation of your grace and your faith that you gave us. Plant these truths be down in our heart. Help us be better on tomorrow for being under the authority of your word today. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen.